Good evening. I oppose in principle this type of debate because, first of all, halacha, Jewish law, disapproves of the polemic, polemical debates. Okay, start again. I oppose in principle this type of debate because, first of all, halacha, Jewish law, disapproves of polemical debates about our faith since A, it is basically a waste of time, B, another's religion is of no relevance to us, and C, debates may result in negative effects by unavoidably provoking the other side. Secondly, <clears throat> polemical debates have merit only where each side is completely com open-minded and is prepared to accept the logical consequences, whatever they may be, even if that means to drop long-held cherished beliefs. <clears throat> in reality, that is, of course, mostly not the case, and debaters mostly seek to refute the other side and time over it without regard to truth. For that matter, to suggest a debate to determine the truth about the most serious matter with strict time restraints of you speak 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 6 minutes, and the other side, and so forth, is rather an absurd tragic comedy. It's like telling a doctor you have five minutes for this part of the operation and six minutes for that part, regardless of what you may find in the patient. Thirdly, for Jews to debate missionary evangelistic groups is especially offensive. To appear on the same stage to debate our individual beliefs creates a perception of two equal parties, two parallel religions, as it were. It appears to lend credibility or equal status to groups or individuals whose sole aim in life it is to deny and destroy authentic Judaism and to lead Jews astray. This we cannot do and never will do. We despise those who would destroy our souls, our spiritual reality, no less than we despise those who would destroy us physically. The interest in debates is not one of pursuing truth, but hopefully to score points for the followers and prospective victims. I may sound harsh, but I'm committed to truth. I agreed to come here exclusively for an objective pursuit of truth, thus I have no choice but to be open and frank, as opposed to saying one thing and thinking or feeling another. Fourthly, most serious of all, there is an aspect of dishonesty in having a polemical debate in 1995 on Christian allegations about Judaism. There have been numerous such debates over the past 2,000 years with Christian theologians or Jewish apostates, generally forced upon us by the dominant Christian powers, mostly with the threat that if the Jews would lose the debate, their communities would be forced to convert, killed, or expelled. We had to weigh our words and arguments most carefully so as not to offend the Christian authorities and suffer dire consequences. Oftentimes we suffered with these anyway, because our opponents were furiously frustrated by failing to present valid arguments. That is another reason why we Jews don't like polemical debates. In short, we Jews have already been confronted by every conceivable question and challenge and already answered every single one of them. We have never lost a debate. Many of these debates have been recorded even by Christians and are readily available in books printed in many languages and found in numerous libraries in addition to numerous polemical and apologetic works composed and printed in medieval and modern times. Practically speaking, this means that there is something basically wrong when somebody still wants to debate us on these issues. If they really want to find out what's what, they can simply go to a bookstore or library and find that the answers to all and any of their questions, plus infinitely more than they want to find. Both the Bible and the rabbinic writings have been thoroughly taken apart in these debates with every possible detail discussed. Thus I question the motivations and merits of such debates and view them as, fishing, as cheap fishing expeditions for purely ulterior motives. What then am I doing here? A to make these points public once and for all. B, to give the lie once and for all to the claim that we rabbis are afraid to debate or have something to hide. I'm not interested in attacking another religion, which is forbidden by Jewish law, or to try and convince Christians to change their minds or beliefs, etc. My sole and ultimate goal is to get missionaries off our backs, to say to them, leave Jews alone. You have nothing to teach us. You have nothing but your personal beliefs, things that you chose to believe in but cannot substantiate objectively. Thus, stop harassing Jews to change what you and we know to be absolutely true, the revealed word of God, for something that is no more than your personal leap of faith in the claims and allegations of one or more individuals of the New Testament, which you chose to believe, just as Muslims chose to believe in Muhammad, Buddhists chose to believe in Buddha, Parsis chose to believe in Zoroaster, Mormons chose to believe in Joseph Smith, Moonies chose to believe in Reverend Moon, etc., etc., etc. And to the Jews among you, I say, 
Return to your fault, to your roots, to that which we all know to be true. Stop speculating about concepts and beliefs alien and unacceptable to your Judaism and get to know about yourself, your heritage, the legacy of your faith, your Jewish link to God. Distance yourselves from mere allegations and unsubstantiated claims of strangers preying on your souls and come back to that which we know for sure that it came from God himself, namely the Torah and its commandments. Thank you, Dr. Shochet. Dr. Brown, your five-minute opening statement, sir. <laughs> 